Hello everyone, welcome back to my travel journal series. My name is Marissa. Today's session is about day 15 of our 16-day adventure to Spain, Morocco, and Portugal. And we're heading to a very special place which is Fatima. If you missed any of the earlier days, you can check out my travel journal playlist for a detailed look at our journey so far. I'll be showing snippets from our trip, then I will attempt to document our adventure to my scrapbook travel journal. Let's dive in. Now let's journal about day 15. I'm using this traveler's notebook in Camel by the Traveler's Company. Currently, there are two inserts inside. The first is a 003 unruled or blank regular size insert by the Traveler's Company, which contains day 1 to 12 of our trip to Spain and Morocco. The second insert has no specific brand but it is also unruled. As I mentioned in my previous Lisbon travel journal video, both inserts covers have no decorations yet. I usually decorate my covers after filling up the insert. This second insert continues our journal from day 13 which marks the start of our Portugal trip. Now let me show you the supplies I'm planning to use for today's session. I may not use all of this or I might add other supplies later, but I prefer to prepare in advance and keep them on hand on my desk. This preparation saves time during the creative process and helps maintain focus. I've chosen items that will match a vintage theme thinking of color shades of blue and gray. Just a tip, planning your theme and color scheme in advance helps create a cohesive and visually appealing spread. It also makes decision making easier as you work. Let's start decorating our spread.
using gray pigment stamping. I am stamping Fatima with large alphabet stamps inside this classic -y memo pad with a blue border. You'll notice I'm placing a cutting mat underneath the memo pad. This is not just for protection. It ensures a clean, crisp impression by providing a firm, flat surface. To fill the space between the last letter and the memo border, I'm adding a tiny square bird sticker. This adds visual interest and balance. Now, I'm shading the Fatima lettering using a gray tumble brush marker for depth. Using a double-sided tape, I am attaching the memo pad to the uppermost part of our left page. Now, I'm arranging our photos, a group shot of our tour companions, a photo inside the church, and the cover of the Fatima brochure. To add interest, I'm fussy cutting the brochure cover. Next, I'm placing the group photo inside a large label sticker from the European Tile Sticker Booklet. Since it's too large for the left page, I'm cutting the excess left part trimming the border And reattaching it next to the photo. This technique allows you to customize stickers to fit your layout. Now let's work on arranging the photos on our right page. This is where we can get creative with composition and layering. First, I'm selecting a circle tile sticker from our European tile sticker booklet. These decorative elements are great for adding visual interest and tying different parts of your layout together. I'm placing this circular sticker strategically where I plan to overlap photos. This creates a nice focal point and adds depth to our layout. Next, I'm taking our Fussy Cut Fatima brochure photo. Instead of placing it straight, I'm going to attach it at a slight angle. This diagonal placement adds dynamism to the page and breaks up the rigid lines of our elements. See how the circular tile sticker peeks out from behind the brochure photo? This layering technique adds depth and interest to our layout. It also creates a nice transition between different elements on the page. Remember, don't be afraid to play around with placement. 
sometimes the perfect layout comes from experimenting with different arrangements. Now let's address this blank space beside our upper left page photo. Empty spaces can be great for balance, but sometimes they need a little something to tie the layout together. I've chosen a simple yet effective stamp that says we were here. It's a perfect way to emphasize our presence at this meaningful location. I'm using blue ink to stamp directly onto the page thinking it will complement our color scheme. However, it looks like the blue ink is coming out a bit too faint. This happens sometimes especially with lighter ink colors, dried out ink, or porous paper. But don't worry, in journaling there are no mistakes, only opportunities for creativity. So here's a quick fix. I'm going to re-stamp the phrase on a separate piece of scrap paper. I'll use our gray pigment ink this time, which should give us a stronger impression. Now see how much clearer that is? Now I'll carefully cut around the stamp phrase, leaving a small border. As a tip, always keep some scrap sticker paper handy. It's perfect for creating impromptu embellishments like we're doing now. Remember, in journaling, unexpected outcomes often lead to the most unique and personal touches. Embrace the imperfections and get creative with your solutions. Now let's add an important element to our spread, which is the date. Remember the excess label sticker we saved earlier? It's about to come in handy. So I'll be using a roller date stamp to add the date. If you don't have one, you can just write the date inside the label sticker with a pen. The decorative border will create a nice frame for our date. A scrapbooking tip, always look for ways to repurpose scraps and leftovers. They can correct stamping mistakes and to reduce waste. Remember, journaling is a creative process. Don't be afraid to experiment and problem solve as you go along. The imperfections often lead to unique and personal touches in your journal. Finally, I'm adding a strip of map to the upper right end of our right page for additional context and visual interest. Now let's move on to the next spread. I have two brochures that I want to add. I'll attach one brochure to the left page with double-sided tape while the other will be a tip-in in the middle of the page. The second brochure contains complete information about Fatima, including a map, photos of the three shepherd children, historical info, and a schedule of activities. I prefer using an invisible tape like 3M Magic Tape to adhere brochures as tip-ins. If you don't have this, you can use any clear tape or even washi tape. The key is to create a hinge that allows the brochure to be opened and read easily. Next, I'm adding a decorative washi tape with blue dainty illustrations to the upper and lower part of the left page brochure. This adds a touch of color and frames the brochure nicely. Now that we've added our tip in, our right page is blank. Perfect for adding more ephemera. On this right page, I'm planning to document our land travel from Fatima to Salamanca. I'm starting by attaching this Salamanca word cut out that I got from a paper bag. This serves as a title for the page and adds visual interest. 
Next, I'll be adding this restaurant receipt from where we stopped for coffee on our way to Salamanca. I'll be attaching this receipt as a tip-in for added writing space on this page. This is a great way to include memories and details without taking up too much space. On the lower part of this page, I'll add the business cards from the Vinci Ciudad de Salamanca, where we stayed for the night. These serve as both decoration and a reminder of our accommodation. Underneath our receipt, I'll be adding this clear stamp from Everyday Explorer with a design on the road using blue chalk ink. This helps to tell the story of our journal visually. Then for added accent, I want to add a cappuccino illustration on the receipt using this clear stamp along with a clear stamp that says hashtag coffee. The small details help bring the page to life and recall specific moments from our trip. I'll also be stamping a hotel icon from Sakura Lala 365 on the hotel business card. This adds a cute thematic touch to the business card. Now let's go back to our first spread for the journaling part. Here, I'm writing about our adventure that day, adding details about the significance of Fatima and what it means to me as a Catholic. This personal reflection adds depth to the journal entry. I've continued my writing on the next spread utilizing the space we created with our tip-ins. Now let's take a look at our finished spreads. Notice how the combination of ephemera, stamps, and personal writing creates a rich, multi-layered record of our day. Remember, the goal of travel journaling is not just to document where you went, but to capture your experiences and feelings. Don't be afraid to include your personal thoughts and reflections alongside the factual details of your journey. And there you have it, our day 15 journal entry is complete. Capturing the magic of Fatima and our journey to Salamanca. I hope this video has inspired you to document your own travels in a creative and personal way. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What's the most meaningful souvenir you've ever included in your travel journal? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video and want to see more of our 16-day adventure through Spain, Morocco, and Portugal, be sure to check out my travel journal playlist. You will find entries for every day of our trip, each filled with tips, techniques, and personal stories. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my channel for more travel journaling inspiration. Until next time, happy journaling and safe travels!